Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. We're going to talk about identifying materials using specific heat capacity. If you haven't yet watched my video on introduction to specific heat capacity, I recommend you do that first before continuing. The basic idea here is, since specific heat capacity tells us how hard it is to heat up a material, and we can actually construct a table of all the different materials and how hard it is to heat them, we can actually use our specific heat capacity equation to figure out what a material is. How do we do that? Well, we look at this equation and CS right here is tabulated in this table over here. So if we have the change in temperature of our material, the heat we added to the material, and the mass of our material, we can calculate our heat capacity. And then we can use that calculated heat capacity to go to our table and match it up. And let's say we calculated the heat capacity was 1.76 joules per gram degree Celsius. We look on our list and we say, oh, there's 1.76, and that's wood. So using heat capacity in a table, you can actually identify what your material is made of if you know it's change in temperature, it's mass, and the heat you add. So this is another very common form of specific heat capacity problem, where we actually will identify a material. And the way we'll do that is we'll calculate heat capacity, and then we'll go over to our table. And our table will list a bunch of different materials. And so we can look for the heat capacity we calculated and thereby identify the material. So let's go ahead and follow our steps. It says identify the knowns and unknowns. Well, right away it tells us that our mass is 31 grams. And then it tells us that it absorbs 0 0.172 kilojoules of heat. So our Q is 0 0.172 kilojoules. It also tells us that its temperature increases by 1.33 degrees Celsius, so that's a delta T. So that's step one in terms of finding the knowns. What's our unknown here? We want to know what the sample is made of. Whenever that question is asked, what we're looking for in terms of our variables is CS. So we want to solve for CS. Why is that? Well, that's the only variable related to the material. So that's the only variable that we can use on the table to figure out what the material is, and I'll show you how we do that at the end of the problem. Okay, now step two says convert units if needed, and remember they need to match our units for heat capacity, which are in joules per grams degree Celsius. So our mass is in grams, so we're good, but our heat is in kilojoules right now. That's not joules, that's kilojoules, so we have to convert that. Now, it turns out kilojoules, the conversion just looks like the conversion from kilograms to grams. There's a thousand kilojoules, or I'm sorry, a thousand joules in a kilojoule. So we have one kilojoule down here and a thousand joules up here. And that's just going to move our decimal over three places. And we're going to get 172 joules. But we have to do that conversion before we plug it into our equation. Okay, now we check out our temperature change. It's in degrees Celsius, so we're good on units there. So we go to step three, rearrange for our unknown and solve. So our equation that we're given is delta T equals Q divided by CS times M. And what we want to do is we want to solve for our unknown. Our unknown is CS. So how are we going to get CS over there? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to multiply both sides by CS. And when we do that, our new equation, our CS on the right-hand side is going to cancel out, and our new equation is going to be CS times delta T equals Q over M. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and divide both sides by delta T, because delta T is with CS, and we want to get CS by itself, so I divide this side by delta T and this side by delta T. And that delta T cancels out, and we're left with CS is equal to Q, over m delta t. So I'll move that equation over here. What we have is cs is equal to q over m delta t. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and plug in our variables, which are all in terms of the right um, units. And our q, remember, is 172 joules. We have to plug that in joules if we want to get our heat capacity out with the units of joules. And our mass is 31 grams. And our temperature change is 1.33 degrees Celsius. So when we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get that our CS is 
0.17. And the, the units there come directly from the units in our equation. They're joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, so we know the heat capacity, but now we have another step. We have to go and look and see what that is in our table. And we go through our table and we see wood has a heat capacity of 1.76. That doesn't match. 0.23 doesn't match. But 4.186, water, liquid water, that matches. So that's what our substance is. This is how you identify materials based on heat capacity. You go and look in that table for what the value is. So this turns out to be water. That's how we can identify materials. We calculate the heat capacity and we identify it on our table. So this guy's made of water. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions on identifying materials using heat capacity, please ask them below. You can also subscribe to Real Chemistry to get updates about future chemistry videos.